again, Merry Christmas. It's nice to be together, and it's nice to have a, a little quieter, a little calmer Christmas service after last night's adventure. But it was wonderful, and it's wonderful to continue on. I'm wondering, as, uh, as we're sitting here this morning, how many uh, had aspects of your Christmas canceled? Everybody? Did anybody have a normal Christmas celebration? No, I, that's not my hand up. Yeah, I mean, it's been different for everybody. It's one of the unique things about this time. There are so many of us who are experiencing the same things at the same time. And Christmas and the holiday and all of the things that go with the holiday celebrations, that's certainly one of them. You know, think about all of the different gatherings and all of the different celebrations and the parties and the, the dinners and, and all of that has been so different and so much of that has been canceled. And my goodness, we, uh, we started out trying to get together with our family for Thanksgiving to begin the holiday season and now we're all the way through and it's still not happening. It's the first time that I ever remember not being with my kids at least at some time before or after the holidays. And I, I know that there are many others who are experiencing that. Gathering together in this COVID season, it's hard. And often it doesn't happen at all. But as we've said throughout this series, the reality is that, that when it comes to Christmas, even when we can't gather in the normal ways, even the, the ways that are very meaningful for us, we still gather around what's most important, Jesus. He's the, the center of the season. Now, you know, as we've moved through the series, we've tried to use different focal points, other things that, that sort of provide a centerpiece for gathering. And so we talked about fire, and we talked about trees, and we talked about the table. Last night, we talked about gathering around the manger, the feeding trough where, where Mary laid Jesus to rest. Today, we're talking about gathering around the Christmas lights. Now, I don't know if you will agree with me or not, but I will tell you, I love Christmas and I love all kinds of parts and, and pieces of Christmas, all kinds of aspects of the celebration. But I will tell you, one of the things that I love absolutely the most are the lights. I mean, even in our sanctuary, don't you love all of the beautiful lights? And I, I confessed this before, you know, my wife is kind of a purist. So she really loves what the folks who decorated the sanctuary in love. They love the white lights, you know, the, the very kind of pristine and, and beautiful white lights. I like the white lights too. I also like the gaudy, multicolored flashing lights. I like all of the lights. Anybody else like that? Yeah, I love all all of the lights. In fact, I absolutely love being able to pull in our neighborhood for, for whatever reason. Maybe it's one of the benefits of the COVID season. Our street is absolutely lit up with Christmas lights. And there are the beautiful, very organized, kind of elegant white lights. And there are the absolutely crazy Christmas got thrown on the lawn lights. But they all look wonderful to me. They all look beautiful. I love the idea of gathering around those lights, celebrating through that wonderful gift of light. Well, you know, in the Scriptures, light and darkness have meaning, don't they? And oftentimes when we talk about light, we talk about hope. We talk about what it is that God brings into our world. And that's contrasted with the idea of darkness. And when it comes to darkness, sin and, and pain and disruption and confusion and war and anger and spite, all of those things are kind of summed up with the, the picture, the idea of darkness. And that goes all the way back to the Old Testament. goes all the way back to the prophets. That's where that, that imagery and that contrast begins. This morning, as we take a look at the prophet Isaiah, we need to remember that Isaiah was writing in a very dark time. Somewhere in the vicinity of 722 B.C., the Assyrians were, were marching and waging war on northern Israel. And I don't know if you remember that part of your world history, but the Assyrians were not nice people. They took great delight in brutality. They took great delight in enslaving peoples, but what they really enjoyed was slaughtering people. 
In fact, in our trip to the Holy Land uh, a couple of years ago, it was amazing to see the, the images that came from Assyria celebrating their victories over Israel. And they were brutal depictions, even, even in sort of a sketchy form. You could tell that they were celebrating that what manifests the, the power of the king and the power of the people was their ability to inflict terrible destruction. That's the context. Israel is under attack. Israel is facing these, these battle-hardened, bloodthirsty warriors. And it was terrifying. And it was terrible. And the prophet Isaiah writes about that. But as he's writing about the pain and writing about the darkness and writing about the fear and writing about the anxiety, he also writes these hope-filled words from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Right? That terrible darkness is pierced by light. Those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah is essentially saying to the people of Israel, even though you are enduring terrible darkness, know this for sure. There is going to be hope. There is hope because there is going to be a light that dawns. Even though the Assyrians are ransacking and attacking and conquering your country, a baby will be born. Now that's kind of shocking, isn't it? A baby is going to be born. That's going to be your hope. Now I will tell you that while we don't have any babies in our house yet, but if any of my kids are streaming the service, that could be taken as an encouragement. Uh, <laughs> we don't have any babies in the house, but I get to handle babies all the time, right? Even in this COVID-19 season, we still baptize babies, and most of the parents are comfortable letting me take those babies and, and baptize them and bring them up here for their blessing and announcement of their wonderful gift but babies are kind of fragile. You know, I, I don't know if you ever pay attention, but I have to tell you, in that transfer from mom to me and that transfer back from me to mom, man, I am super careful. Because, well, let's just say dropping a baby is a bad thing, right? <laughs> and I worry about their necks, you know. That's the thing that freaks me out the most, the way their necks kind of loll around. So I've always got my hand. In fact, sometimes somebody, some people have teased me. It looks like I'm holding a football. But, man, I want their head in my hand where it's safe, right? Babies are fragile. So how in the world, how in the world can a baby bring hope in the face of the Assyrians? You have to know that the people hearing the prophets say these words, they had to be kind of shocked, don't you think? But what's happening here is that the prophet is not only speaking words of hope to Israel, he's speaking words of hope to the whole world. And listen to what he says about this baby. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Dear friends, as we think about this child, this baby, this son that is given, I want to spend a few moments in this message just talking about those titles very briefly. So let's start with the very first. To us a, a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called what? Wonderful Counselor. You know, when you think of dark times, when you think of our present dark time. In the midst of darkness, there can be brutality, there can be pain, there can be grief, there can be confusion. In fact, when we're in those dark times, it seems like there is always confusion. And yet, when you think about the name given to this child, Wonderful Counselor, what God is saying through the prophet Isaiah is that he's giving to us someone who can guide us, someone whose words we can trust, someone that we can take to heart. And when they speak to us, 
They'll give us wisdom. Show of hands. How many of you have prayed for wisdom like never before during this season? Right? When, there, when there's no definitive answer, when it seems like we can't find anybody who knows exactly what to do or how to resolve situations, how to remain safe, We've been praying for wisdom for lots and lots of things. We've been praying for wisdom for lots of other people who lead and guide. Dear friends, this promise for us, not just for the people of Israel, not just for the, the time of biblical proportion, when we're talking about right now in this dark time, God is promising a wonderful counselor. Now again, think about what a wonderful counselor is. You know, maybe it's your accountability group. Or maybe it's a a wise and faithful friend. Maybe it's your spouse. But a wonderful counselor is someone who not only knows what's happening and knows, can give you guidance in terms of how to press forward, but it's somebody who knows you. And the reason they can give you wonderful counselors is because they're not just spewing knowledge. They're not just spewing some kind of general wisdom. What they speak and what they say is specifically effective for you and your life. You realize this child, this child to be a wonderful counselor, it doesn't just know stuff. This wonderful counselor knows you and knows me knows our hearts and knows our needs and knows our struggles and knows how to move forward. We need this wonderful counselor, this baby who brings hope. Well, the titles continue. Not only a wonderful counselor, he's mighty God. You know, sometimes in the midst of of dark, painful, difficult, confusing periods, It seems like there's a lack of power, a lack of ability to get anything done, right? You know, I don't know if you've had this experience, but it happens on mornings like this, you know, where the weather kind of changes and it becomes very cold or when we get a sudden hot spell in the spring and the weather becomes very hot, you go out to your car and you turn the ignition switch and it goes click, 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 right? Everybody knows that experience? That's usually an indication of what? You're out of power. Your battery has gone bad. It's amazing how dark, difficult, confusing, painful times can drain away our power. But what's being promised is that this baby, the baby we talked about last night that we we see when we peek into the manger, this baby is mighty God. It means he doesn't just have power. It means he has power enough for anything and everything. You know, have you seen those those little uh, jump starts? You know, I remember in the olden days, you know, you jump started from somebody else's car. And then it was such a glorious revolution when you could jump start from from a big box. And then you you could jump start from Smaller boxes, and maybe they even had an air compressor attached to them, right? Have you seen the new jump start kits? They fit in your glove compartment. They're just tiny little battery packs. But they will jump start your car from click, 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 click to full power. It's amazing. Sometimes great power can come in tiny packages. Well, that's what God is saying. Don't miss it. Don't overlook it. This baby is going to have the power of God. That means not only does he have all the power he needs, it means he has all the power he needs to keep every one of his promises. And I love this promise that comes in Isaiah just a a few verses later. You have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Imagine a baby with the power to shatter the power of the Assyrian army. That's the baby that is available to you and me. 
not just a wonderful, wise counselor, an amazingly powerful God right here in our midst. Emmanuel, God with us. But it goes on. He's not only wonderful counselor, mighty God, he is everlasting Father. You know, when all of this COVID craziness began, I, I don't know if you were like me, I was sort of hoping that we were talking about a, a period of weeks, right? In fact, in social media, I and a, a couple of other pastors created a, a website called 21 Days Together. We were just kind of planning on trying to get through the 21 days, understand what was happening, bless and encourage our people, and hopefully things would begin to change. Well, that shows how much we know, Right? What started out as a sprint has turned into a marathon. And despite the fact that there's hope involving vaccines and other kinds of things, the reality is we still don't know how long it's going to go on. There's still uncertainty about how long this marathon is. The only thing that I can imagine worse than running 26 miles at a time is running 26 miles and not even knowing if that's where you're going to stop. And yet... That's where we are. The Israelites knew that feeling because the Assyrians just kept coming. And the prophet speaks to the Israelites and he speaks to us and he reminds us that we have an everlasting Father. Our troubles and our trials, our struggles and our pain will never outlast God. There is always a bright dawn. There is always hope for tomorrow because no matter where things go, no matter what's happening in this world, you and I have the promise that that our pain and our struggles, our difficulties and our anxiety, our grief and our illness, all of the stuff that we face because of sin in this world, all of that is timing out. All of that has a lifespan. But you and me, Because of this baby, we are eternal. Let that sink in for just a minute. Because I know, I know there are so many thoughts about whether we're going to be okay and will we make it till we get a vaccine and, and who's going to be sick and who's going to be well and all kinds of thoughts about our temporal circumstance and appropriately so. I agree with all of that. But we can't ever lose sight of the fact that you and I are not defined by a a certain number of years. We're not defined by by an illness that becomes terminal or a body that wears out. You and I are defined as eternal because our eternal Father has made us eternal through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I always... Marvel, because it's my job to preach that message. But I have been so blessed over so many years to talk to so many of our people who are facing their own death, who know that their time isn't just on the horizon, it's days or hours or minutes away. And to hear them say with confidence, Pastor, I'm good. Because I know where I'm going. I know what happens next because of Jesus. In a crazy marathon like we're in right now, we've got to remember we have an eternal Father who through His Son Jesus has made us eternal. Okay, so wonderful counselor, mighty God, Everlasting Father, what's next? Prince of Peace. Aren't you glad we have a Prince of Peace? And I love the idea that that Isaiah speaks to us about this baby who is our Prince of Peace as being light in a dark world because, you know, when, when it's dark, it makes the lights look more beautiful. But when the lights are gone, it can be kind of scary. And I'm not talking about being afraid of the dark. You know, I I know lots of folks, lots of kids who are afraid of the dark. I'm not talking about afraid of the dark. I'm talking about the danger that lurks in the dark. 
I'm talking about the kinds of things that we can stumble over and fall, the kinds of things that can can hurt us or damage us. Light makes all the difference, doesn't it? I mean, literally, the things that, that I might stumble over if I'm walking through my house in the dark, all I have to do is turn on a tiny nightlight, and that danger goes away completely. This baby is intended to come into our lives and shine not just a a tiny nightlight, to shine his brilliant light and glory in our hearts and in our minds. Not only makes us safe to maneuver and move about, it also helps us see the things that cause us to stumble in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives, in our attitudes and in our actions. He literally has come to help us avoid those things. But more than that, Because you and I, we're never going to be perfect in these years. We're always going to have those things that cause us to stumble. We're always going to have those moments when we fall. We're always going to have the the issues of, of failure in our life. This Prince of Peace has shined his light into our lives, not just to give us warning and 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 provide alternatives and options. This Prince of Peace has shined his light into our lives to erase those struggle points, to forgive those stumbles. This Prince of Peace reminds us that even when we make mistakes, even when we fall short, even when we, we carry shame and guilt, he has come and by the power of his light, he literally erases all of that darkness through his forgiveness, by grace. So, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Who is this child? Well, you know the the literal answer, don't you? This child is Jesus. But the more important question today is not just what's his name. It's who is he to you? Dear brothers and sisters, the key to this whole miracle of Christmas isn't in the decorations or the food or the presents or even the church services. The key to this whole Christmas miracle is that you and I, by faith, embrace this child. Now maybe you say, well, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how to do that. I have got such good news for you. It's simple. Just ask him. Just invite him to be in your life. He's not going to turn you into some kind of raving lunatic. He's not going to make you do things you don't want to do. What he's going to do is provide that wonderful counselor. He's going to give you that incredible power. He's going to be there to help you know that you are a person of eternity so your whole perspective changes, and he's going to give you peace. And I will tell you that those gifts will make all the difference, not just in COVID-19 times. Those gifts make all the difference all the time. And it's as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, live in my heart. For those of you who already know him, it's as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, on this Christmas day, I renew my trust in you. Because even as you are speaking those words, even as you are thinking those words and praying those words, know that it's the Holy Spirit working in your heart and your life to make all of that happen. See, that's the amazing thing. This child isn't just a baby. This child grows up and becomes Savior of the world. And he is so powerful that his message continues to go forth day after day, moment after moment, life after life, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, nothing can stop the Holy Spirit. You know, there's just one more, one more verse. And it's a, a verse that I want to just remind you of. Because I know we're going to leave this Christmas service and, and we're going to go back into an uncertain time, a dark time. In John chapter 1, 
You know that very strange Christmas story? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Remember all of that? It's literally a Christmas story, but it doesn't sound like it. In verse 5 of John chapter 1, it says these words about Jesus. The light, Jesus, shines in the darkness. And the darkness, what? Has not overcome it. Because the darkness can never overcome the light. It's impossible. The darkness of our world can never overcome the light. The darkness that we battle with in our own hearts and in our souls can never overcome the light of Jesus. He is the conqueror. He is the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you have loved us with that everlasting love and you have sent that baby you promised. We're grateful, Lord, that we live on this side of that promise fulfilled so that we know it's not just a baby, it is a Savior who did miraculous things, who taught like no one had ever taught. And when it looked like all was done and he was dead and gone, the impossible happened. He rose again and now reigns with you as our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Strengthen us in this faith, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.